Hello everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to talk about why I left the institutional church, church organizations, whatever you want to call it. But please note that I did not leave the church because I don't believe that you can believe something that you are. And I believe each of us individually are the church and we comprise the body of Christ collectively. And so, you know, we are to offer the sacrifices of praise, the fruit of our lips unto our God, which I don't believe that a building or a structure, uh, or, or rather that we need a building or a structure in order to do that, because our bodies are the temple of God. And so, you know, it's not d defined by a certain day of the week or um, a certain uh, type of service, if you will, uh, at a certain time. Uh, but that is defined by who we are as individuals. And so I'm not saying that if anyone belongs to church organization or an institutional church, that that is wrong. I am speaking personally about my own journey and my own story. And I will start off really by just letting it be known that I also believe that there is therefore now no condemnation uh, to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the, the flesh, but after the spirit. So however the spirit is leading you as an individual, however the spirit is leading me as, as an individual, I think is all legitimate. And so that's one thing that, uh, you know, we have to come to terms with as people that are born again believers, as people that love God and, and that want to serve God. We have to come to terms with the fact that the Holy Spirit is not restricted by I, our idea of things. And so if he's moving a certain way in one person, he has every right to move another way in another person. Um. You see, and, and what I'm going to do is, you know, when I, when I call out and, and, and say scriptures, you know, this is not a Bible study. So I'm not going to, you know, bore you with, you know, turning and flipping the pages of the Bible to, uh, to get a certain scripture to, to try and, um, you know, validate what I'm saying. I'm just going to say it, um, from my heart. And I hope you receive it as that. You see, when I was involved with uh, the institutional church, I really believe you didn't get any more faithful than, uh, than I was. Because I believed that, you know, if you were going to be a part of it, that you give your absolute all and your absolute best. But the problem came in where I gave my all and my best at the expense of my family. So being a worship leader in the church for <clears throat> some 10 years, and even being, of course, a member prior to that. But let me just talk about those years in particular. Uh, you know, you have your your two services. You have, on Sundays, you have, you know, your uh, intercessory prayer one night. Another night you have your life group or your Bible study. Another night you have the rehearsal. So I, so, so far that's four nights out of the week. And if you and if you, you know, are really striving to do what has been taught to you and presented to you about faithfulness, then uh, you you gonna do all that. And I really thought that was important, you know, as far as being a faithful church member. That you know you really needed to be there every time the door opened. Now I don't I. I didn't condemn people who didn't, but I personally really thought that that was the way that, uh, that God wanted me to do things. 
And my eyes began to open up little by little, and um, I began to see the error of my way. And so it, I believe it kind of started when my children, um, who are all very athletic, they all play sports, and, and God has gifted them in that area. Um, but at the time, they had, you know, these city leagues, and and so my girls, they wanted to play basketball on these leagues. Well, this particular league had their games on Sundays. And of course, you know, my husband and I were like, no, they can't do it because their game's on Sundays and we have to be in church. Not only, you know, did we not allow them to, to be on that particular league because the games were on Sunday? Uh, you know, they had to be in the two services with us on Sundays as well. And now I know some of you might be thinking, well, you know, you didn't have to do all that. You know, that was that was ridiculous on your part. You know, you could just be a, a casual church member and you could just do things casually and not go overboard. Absolutely. You are correct. But I'm again, I'm telling my story. And I'm telling you, you know, the things that led up to where I am today. OK, so. I just finally kind of got fed up and wore out. And I believe that the Holy Spirit was like speaking to me. You know, what are you doing? And why are you doing what you're doing? And so I started reflecting on just the the circle it seemed that I was running around in. You you have you seen a hamster on that that circle? I don't even know what you call it. And the hamster gets on that 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 um his little game or toy or whatever and he just spins around and around and he goes around in circles. And that's the extent of his travel around in that circle. And I begin to feel like that hamster that was just going around in circles, repeating the same cycles, just, you know, routine, mundane, repetitive, nothing uh, filling or fulfilling necessarily to my life after a while. And then I thought one day, how ridiculous. My children are, they're gifted athletes. I mean, how ridiculous that they can't play on a league just because it's a Sunday. How ridiculous. But anyway, so the Lord starts just revealing <clears throat> more and more to me and um, about what I was doing. And I, I came to the realization that, first of all, uh, as a mother and as a wife, my first ministry is to my family. You know. We all like to quote that Proverbs 31 woman. But if you're so busy doing all this for this organization, you ain't even got no time to be a Proverbs 31 woman. As a matter of fact, the only thing you have time to do is quote that scripture. And somehow we have found some sort of satisfaction just in the ability to quote scriptures. But the manifestation of those scriptures is literally impossible because you're all tied up and wrapped up in doing, uh, re, uh, performing repetitive services at a location called church. Stay tuned for part two.